right now. We we enjoying the good energy right here. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna go to two songs from that project, the Disciples of E project, and we're gonna bring him on. So the call number is one five one six five three one nine five nine six. And I also have a track for my man Goldie Lo. That's right, the Goldie Lo from the East Side. I got a track from him as well. I'm gonna play that first, then I'm gonna follow up with the Disciple of East tracks. So let's get it, y'all. This is Goldie Lo, new Goldie Lo right here from the East Siders.
Three Fingers Productions. Rest in peace, Easy E, KMG. We ruthless. See, I was caught up on that gangster shit. Hit you hard like spread of the cops and Alpine with the whoopers bumping. Listen to the homie Easy. Selling a bunch of dope and trying to dodge a bunch of felonies. Lord Rick Chronic watching time go by. Ducking po hoping hoping I don't die. Yeah, that's why I still say fuck em. Cause they got the target on my back and like a bitch I can't trust. And like the homie Easy say, I can't love em. And like the homie KMG say, we a bubble. So let the Chevrolet drop, let the front end hop. And let them know I represent for promoting the watch. We stay ruthless for life when we keep it gangster and never caught up in the hype. So believe what you want to believe. Here's a mouth full of nuts, you can swallow these. I'm just sitting here to reminisce a long time ago Thinking how we used to roll And dip low And rock shows and get big dogs I'm just sitting here to reminisce a long time ago Thinking how we used to roll And dip low And rock shows and get big dogs I reminisce sometimes, sometimes I think too much But like the homie Easy say, we ruthless so fuck it Still a boy in the hood Still gun you down quick, fast, cross me up I wish you would I'm still dipping in the lack I'm still thinking about my brother KMG And how we made major scratch Together we was undeniable And we was untouchable Yeah, I miss them both every day That's why I ride for them And fuck what the haters say So roll up, crack a 40 to this And just ride with me while I reminisce Yeah, it ain't nothing like gangsta shit We created it We run the planet, and we don't give a fuck, that's the way we planned it. I'm just sitting here reminiscing all time, so, thinking how we used to roll, and dip low, and rock shows, and get big dogs. I'm just sitting here reminiscing all time, so, thinking how we used to roll, and dip low, and rock shows, and get big dogs. I'm reminiscing about an incredible man with a master plan, rolling through with a strap in his hand Told me when we first met up Lil homie be yourself And I'ma blow you up Yeah, I think back when I first met My brother KMG The long night hustling The music chemistry The way we bought music to life The way we move people And rock shows night after night I can't make this shit up My life is a movie You niggas need to catch up I thank God I met TVD I'm much better I met KMG for a reason, everybody here has a purpose, everything has a season, it don't matter the time, it's always gonna be ruthless on mine, I'm just sitting here reminiscing all time, so, thinking how we used to roll, and dip low, and rock shows, and get big dogs, I'm just sitting here reminiscing all time, so, thinking how we used to roll, and dip low,
from the east to the west side. L.A., East L.A., gotta say what's up to my vato, hey. We ain't tripping off Donald Trump, cause we roll with an AK and some punk. We just gon' ride it out, cause we ruthless for life. Revenge is like a porno if you think you're getting fucked Cause royalty's a must, ain't God we trust If you don't believe in diamond, you might find that on a buck Cause you ain't got that, cause you look broke as fuck I'm tired of your bitches with your coats and your trucks Cause you chillin' in an apartment, bitch, you's a duck Smashing all you rap bitches like a Tonka truck Layla Ali flow, watch the uppercut Shit, I'm hotter than peppers out of Dragon Ball Ice girl, got these bitches hate wild down But cash, money, MHG, CMB The ruthless family, I'm a lady OG chopping it up for the past couple weeks, and I wanted to find a way to bring him on. And I looked at the names that he had up there, and I'm like, man, he got Rufus Records back in effect with this project here. I'm talking BG Knockout, Lazy Bone, The Big Homie, Cocaine, Above the Law, Silky Fine, and many, many others, Dirty Red. And I'm pretty sure he's going to give more names to himself. So... Without further ado, let's put some respect on this guy right here because he put together one of the best compilations I heard in a minute. Mr. Sergio Hernandez. What's up? What's up? What's up? How's it what's, going? What's up, King Eric? How you what's doing? What's good, man? my man? Oh, uh, man, just chilling, you know, just cooking some dinner and just, you know, kicking it here, listening to the show. Yes, sir, man. I mean... I got to say, man, I've heard a lot of compilations this year. It's been a lot of good music despite that. We all been quarantined, and we can't really get access to a lot of things. But this project right here, this is straight up three home runs in one. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. Yeah. 
Damn, that's cool, man. I'm glad. I'm glad you feel that way. You know, I've been getting a lot of good, uh, positive feedback. You know, from those people who listen to it. Um, a lot of you know old school ruthless fans and some new, some new school. You know, so um, yeah, man. I'm really excited to finally have been able to put this out. It's uh, about ten years in the making, probably oh. more. But um, it's been a, it's been a while in the works. <laughs> man, ten years. That's crazy. Now, before we get to that, I'm going to bring on my uh, my other co-host, man, t Max with the facts. He's here with the second hour right here. All right, cool. What's up? What's good, brother? What's going on, Kepa? What's going on, Kepa? What's going on, Kepa? What's Yeah, it's all bien. Aquí, chilling. <laughs> ah, bueno, bueno. What's going on, man? Just got off work and everything. So I'm here, you know what I'm saying? So... I missed the first round, but I'm here for round two in terms of what King got lined up, man. So we're happy to have you on, man. You know, Mr. Sergio, so um, I guess like anything, you know, just tell our audience a little bit about yourself, how you got started in the game, you know, and uh, all the, you know, work that went into putting together, you know, our outstanding opus of your album. All right, cool. All right, so, yeah, this pretty much um, I'm just a regular, you know, music fan, uh, always had a big uh, easy e easy e ruthless uh obsession i guess growing up um so you know i started a forum back in 2005 easy uh, was a, you know this was back in the days before before social media blew up so that was like the gathering main one of the main gathering places for easy e and ruthless fans you know just register and start posting you know just we used to do a lot of little mixtapes here and there, free mixtapes. You know, every year we would release a couple mixtapes to celebrate his his birth and uh, his uh, his the day that he passed. So you know, we just did our part as fans to keep his memory alive. Um, and then as time went by, MySpace popped up, and then Facebook got popular, and you know, we started a network with some of the original artists. So that was a big turning point. You know, like. Before like 2007, you know, these people were just like, I was wondering, what's up with Dirty Red? You know, what's Dirty Red been up to? I don't know. Or, you know, I know Big Hutch and other artists were putting out music. Cocaine was always putting out music, but they were not easy to access. So once uh, MySpace and social media blew up, you know, a regular fan like myself was easily able to reach out to Cocaine and Dirty Red. and, And that was a turning point. That's where I got the idea, you know, to make this compilation album um so you know started back back then you know everybody else hitting up you know doing interviews back then i was i did a documentary uh titled ruthless memories so i was able to interview a lot of these ruthless artists um and that's how i you know began you know getting getting close to them and just helping them with whatever little work they you know they needed flyers or online stuff i would help out whoever was whoever needed the support you know and as time went by, you know, we just started, you know, I got them to collaborate on some 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 beats that my producer Ulex made, and started gathering a collection of artists from back in the, you know, 90, let's say 93, 92 to 95, artists that worked with Easy during that time period. Um, I wasn't able to get everybody on this project. Um, some people, you know, it's a little harder to get, but I tr- did my best to get as many as the, the artists that I was really a big fan of. And, you know, I was able, we were able to make it a reality. And it's like a dream, you know, lifelong dream to do this and to make it happen. It's really, it's really nice. Definitely. Now, you know, rep in oh. LA, you know, uh, and I want to ask you two questions because of course, you know, uh, we got to shout out our Brown brothers too, you know, shout out to Brownside, Toker, you know, everybody, you know, Kid Frost, yeah. um, right. you know, uh, Mellow Man Ace, you know, everybody, man. Yeah, everybody, you know, shout out yeah. to the whole East L.A., you know, everybody in the barrios, man. Um, yeah. For Easy, what did Easy mean to the West Coast gangster rap culture for all of you? Yeah, for uh, for all of us, I mean, Easy, you know, he was like the leader. Like, my eyes, he was the leader. He was the one who was, even though he probably wouldn't put himself out there as a leader, you know, in my eyes as a fan, Growing up back then, and maybe in the eyes of everybody out here, he was like the one that was, you know, running the whole West Coast, in my opinion, because he was 
the boss, he was gangster, and he did whatever he wanted. He had his own label. He didn't have to do whatever the majors were telling him. He did whatever he wanted, you know? He was able to put the brown side out, you know, do whatever, you know, different different styles. Whatever he felt like putting out, he did Bone Thugs, which was a whole totally different, different sound that we weren't used to, you know? And he could do whatever he wanted as long as he felt, you know, it was going to work, you know? So to me, it was like the biggest... Like the big, you know, the boss of the West Coast, in my opinion. And that was what dope about Easy yeah. too was that he wasn't he wasn't afraid to branch the label out. Like he branched in the R and B, then he brought JJ Fad and Michelle A. Then he brought Blood yeah. of Abraham, which was a Jewish rap group. Then he brought yeah. the Black Eyed Peas. He wasn't exactly. afraid to take those risks. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, he had the yeah, he wasn't afraid, and he was. He was able to do it, you know. He could whatever he wanted to do, he could do. It. He did a lot of great things. The short time yeah, he was man. here, you know. Definitely, we can't. Yeah. You know. So in terms of you know. Hello, can't hear you. I'm trying to. Oh. Yeah. I'm trying to make sure the sound is so... good. Y'all on? All right, cool, cool. Yeah, we on, we on. Okay, we good, we good. Yeah. So in terms of, you know, in terms of you to really start writing. I think that's T-Max having a little uh, problem right here. Okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> okay, can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah you're good now. Okay, right. yeah. So in terms of um, so in terms of your writing and everything, um, with Easy, you know, Easy and so many other artists inspiring you, um, how long did it take you to really get your pen sharp, you know, in terms of really honing your craft and, you know, knowing that you could do this for a career? Oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Let me put on speaker, see if it sounds louder. It sounds kind of low on my end. Okay, okay. Hello? Yeah, can yeah, you hear me? Thank you. Okay, yeah, I can hear you better now. Yeah, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, as I was saying, in terms of, you know, him inspiring you to rhyme, you know, how long was it for you really getting your pen game down, you know, really just sharpening your skills, you know, really getting your style, you know, intact, and then you realizing, you know, when you could really make this a career? All right. Okay. 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 Uh, so, basically, um, I'm not I'm not on the album. I'm just put, basically put the album together. I wish right, I could right. write. <laughs> right. I mean, I wish, but I know um, I did a lot of writing when I was on the forum. I run a couple blogs, so as far as that, I just felt it, you know, it just came out, like, the inspiration came out for me to type up articles and post stuff up online regarding Easy and Ruthless, um, mm -hmm. and then I was able to link up with the artist, like, pretty much I just put this album together, mm -hmm. you know, you know, executive produced it, put it out, you know, put it out there for fans like me to enjoy, so, you know, I wish I was an artist, that would be real cool. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> got man, you, got you. <laughs> So what goes yeah, into yeah, the yeah, leg yeah. work in terms of putting together a compilation? Yeah. I was definitely about to get into that. Yeah, good question, T Mac. Yeah. So what goes into the work of putting this compilation together? Yeah. 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 All right. So yeah, you know, just a lot of well, like I said, it took me about over, a little over ten years, and I started off, you know, I I got cocaine to, you know, I got him to do it. The first song um, he was recorded was Cocaine, Easy's Legacy. And from there, I just, it took me a while. So, you know, the financing, you know, I was doing it straight from my, you know, all by myself, executive producing it. So I had to come up with the funds myself and just take my time with it. You know, I wasn't rushing with it. And um, I had a producer that, his name Ulex out of uh, Germany. We had linked up back 2005 during the forum easy cpt forum days and um you know we just decided to do one producer on the whole album and keep the sound you know the sound that we like which is 90s you know old old ruthless sound what we consider old ruthless i don't know what the fans will think they'll have to decide for themselves but you know it took a lot of work a lot of time you know because it's basically 100 percent independent you know so it's just all all the work falls in the hands of a few people you know so it's, it's in a way it's good that way that way we we control what we're putting out there you know but it was a lot of work 
especially with the transitioning from CDs to digital too. Did that play a key yeah. role? Yeah, that's, yeah, you know, it's, uh, yeah, digital, you know, we're, we're still waiting for that. I mean, obviously, uh, coronavirus has slowed everything down right now, but, um, yeah, man, should should be on iTunes, Spotify, very, any time now, you know, I'm waiting, I've been waiting. But, yeah, digital, you know, we've we've always dropped uh, digital mixtapes, you know, back in the days, every year we released it for free, free downloads, which just basically remixes with easy vocals or Rufus vocals. And that was just for fun, you know, as a fan, just, you know, for free for all of us to enjoy, you know. But, uh, yeah, digital is something else, you know, it kind of levels the feel a little bit. So now we could put stuff out, you know, and everybody can get it. Faster, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Usually it's faster, but right now it's slow. I don't know if you guys have been trying to put anything out lately, but, damn, been waiting a while. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Now, so, now, when you put, the, you put the, now, I ain't, uh, I, and I ain't know what was going on with my phone, man. I think I was like, man, did, y'all better not mess up this interview, man. I was about to get on my company's ass. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was, because I was, I couldn't hear y'all at first. And I was like, hold up, what's going on? But what I was going to ask him was, in making the compilation, because, it has to also have flow, and it also got to have a theme to it. Because, see, I hear a lot of compilations, and, People would just slap songs up there, hoping to sell. Now, did putting the format together play a key role in making this thing flow, like giving it a flow structure? Yeah. So you know, yeah, we try to. Uh, what we did is just by having, I think, by having one producer, and you know, mm-hmm. similar. You could kind of sound here similar, but it's different. You know, everything, every track's different, but it's a similar vibe. You know, throughout the whole album, and then just. The way we, you know, set up the tracks, you know, the order, I think that helped a lot, you know, thanks to my producer, Ulex. Um, but, yeah, I think that has a lot to do with the sound of this album. And then the theme, you know, it's like a, you know, I always like the easy, dark sense of humor and I, his, you know, the darker stuff, like even with Bone Thugs. So, you know, the album cover and the whole theme of the album is like a, it almost looks like an old uh, ancient book or something, you know, Bible type of, you know, you know something you know spiritual you know what I mean so it's pretty you know yeah something I thought really I just had a certain vision for it (laughs) definitely now in terms of you know and one thing about it is on this show praise our guests you know um, you know um, especially from an independent perspective because we know you know, especially with what we do being an independent outfit, we understand the work, the dedication, the devotion, the tenacity, you know, and the inordinate hours you put in in terms of, you know, putting a project together that you envision and making it come to fruition. Um, yeah. How have you seen from, you know, over your time in the industry from 2005 to now, how have you seen the business change in terms of how artists are marketing themselves and how the music itself has changed? Um, well, yeah, the music's definitely changed. I mean, and the marketing, all that stuff, you know, everything's more mm-hmm. online, uh, social media, you know, Instagram and all these other apps that I, I'm not too familiar with, but you know, it's like just quick little for marketing, you know, quick little clips and eye catching stuff. And, you know, I mean, things have changed compared to back then when those magazines, you know, we'd see the ads on magazines and maybe on TV you would see a commercial, a small commercial clip, you know, and then, um, you know, a lot of information for the marketing we'd use for forums back then, uh, like, you know, forums. And so, yeah, man, things have changed definitely. I mean, I, I'm not a, I haven't been in the industry as far as business wise, but that's what I've seen as far as, you know, a fan, you know, like, uh, you know, this is my only project that I'm, putting out you know for the you know for a while so it's just like mostly it's like just like a one project that is a dream you know put out a couple mm-hmm. others in the last few years but um this was my main my main one that i just want to you know put it out and just it's my tribute too easy you know definitely um, how has the response been thing. so far to the project uh, so far it's been pretty good i mean um people have been really liking the music 
you know, a lot of I get a lot of feedback saying it's that this kind of sound has been missing. I mean, I've been getting really positive feedback that kind of surprises me because um, and because I know these people are honest, you know. So I was like, oh shit, okay, you know, if they're telling me this, I I believe it. So you know what I mean. And also, you know, since I've been work, we've been working on this. I've been hearing this project for the last three years or two years. So I've heard it like many times, hundreds of thousands of times, probably maybe hundreds of times already. So you know when it hits the fans, it's cool to hear their feedback and what they really feel like it's fresh to them, you know, something new. So it's been pretty good. Definitely. Now, one thing too, Sergio, that you had mentioned about the magazines and everything, um, because of how the market, especially journalism and advertisement. Um, because some people would try to say that print integral as it once was. Of course, we're going of course with Source Magazine, Rap Pages, Double XL when they first started, and now everything. You know, now a lot of the formats are going to digital. Um, how important do you think it still is for print journalism in terms of people actually having, you know, magazines, periodicals in their hands to really engage themselves and engulf? you know, really absorb themselves into, you know, the written pieces that can truly articulate, you know, in a tangible fashion, you know, what's going on in the culture and artists such as yourself, you know, produce who really uh, take the time to really cultivate such a, a profound and, you know, incredibly dope passion project. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's really, uh, yeah, it's really uh, important still, you know, because um, now everything's digital. All these magazines are digital, mm-hmm. and but you know, it's always it's always nice to once in a while, you know, get your hands on an actual magazine. And I mean, I don't, I haven't done that in years, you know, unless I pull out one of my old source magazines from the closet. But you know, if it's it's cool, you know, and there is a lot of journalists, you know, still on, you know, that are online and being printed. Well, obviously, whoever everybody who's printed now is all uh, has to be online. But uh, you know, it's important. You know, just to to be able to get you know people's perspective on on music and you know things going on in the world and just reading it. You know, it's it's cool whether it's online, digital, or handheld. You know, like old school. That's more more like old school. Mostly, I see that more like for collectors. You know, like if you could buy a magazine with. I'll probably buy that just if I had somebody like Easy E on the cover. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, you know, look, look, King will tell you I'm a magazine head. King will tell you about what I sent him last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, um, you know, in terms of the old caution, you know, shout out to Gonzo and the crew. Definitely, man. Oh, yeah. So, you know, and um, one thing you have said. You know, one thing about compilations is that uh, I think it like any album, everything has to flow together from a context of really making sure that the songs connect in terms of a common theme, telling a common story. You know, everybody's sharing a collective experience that, you know, is expressed through the album. You know, uh, yeah. what was it like really putting it to see, you know, a lot of artists, you know, when they're just writing, you know, a lot of artists now in this generation of hip hop uh, really don't understand what work goes into it in terms of really, you know, your, uh, you know, your track laydowns, your ad libs, you know, your, your doubling of uh, your vocals, you know, sound effects, yeah. just making sure that everything, you know, having a proper recording booth, you know, a mix and mastering to make sure everything is filtered through right, that the beats and the rhymes coexist together correctly. What is the process of really putting it something like that together in general? Well, yeah, it takes a it takes a lot of work. You know, a lot of uh, and, you know, it's always best when you go into a studio with a professional. You know, shout out to uh, Kiki from the Hennessy Lounge. We did a, a lot of the art, you know, the recording there. Um, you know, and then um, but yeah, you know, it takes it's very important. You know, just to make sure everything sounds proper. I mean. I know there's some people who could pull it off, you know, work from the from the room, you know, with their mic and pull it off. So, you know, props to them, you know, that's pretty cool. But, you know, we, you know, doing it the, if you, you know, compared to that and then the, the studio way, it's, uh, 
you know, it's a different experience too. You know, you're sitting there, you know, the artist is sitting there writing his lyrics sometimes or, you know, tightening stuff up that he wants to change. And then, um, you know, it's an important process. You just have to hear it, the ad living. It's, you know, it's a whole experience, you know, and I, I'm really fortunate and happy that I was able to, you know, be, be in the booth, in the studio with some of these artists while they were, rec- you know, recording their stuff. Uh, mo- some of these artists recorded it in their own studios, you know, wherever, you know, wherever they might live. Since, you know, a lot of these artists, artists are, you know, live in different areas other than Los Angeles. So, uh, but yeah, man, it's very important, you know, just to make sure you have somebody that knows what they're doing behind the board, you know, like recording and, you know, recording everything and hearing it, making sure it sounds just tight. So, yeah, man, it's a, it's an experience, you know, interesting experience. Now, were there some other Definitely. acts that you tried to get at, like MC Ren or DJ Yellow? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. You know, uh, yeah. Throughout the years, you know, I, I've been, I've tried. You know, I've tried almost everybody, pretty much. And you know, and I respect everybody. You know, because I'm, you know, uh, whoever I could reach out to, I tried to reach out to. Obviously, some like Dr. Dre. Uh, you know, I can't reach. I couldn't. I probably wouldn't even want to try it all. I don't know, personally. That's me personally. But, uh, yeah, man, I reached out to a few other artists. You know, I, I was, you know, but I'm really happy with the ones that I got, you know. So I'm I'm very, very happy with that, you know. And, you know, thankful to them, you know. But, yeah, I reached out to a few. I'd probably rather not name them because, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to put no one on the spot, you know. But, uh, yeah, man. Definitely. And it was cool. In it was cool. You got, you got uh, easy, some of Easy Seeds up there, man. We had, we actually had E3 yeah. on the show a couple years back. Oh, uh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, man, I was able to get on, you know. That's pretty cool. We go back, you know, we've done stuff in the past, so that's really cool that I was, I was I'm, you know, I feel very blessed and fortunate to have gotten him, you know. Him and Lil Easy and everybody. everybody. And, them dudes, just, and them dudes are sharp on that mic, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Now, in terms of what I've seen over the years, how has it changed and developed, you know, in terms of, like, a lot of the, you know, from where you, you know, from North, you know, shout out to the OGs, like, you know, Uncle Rich, Rich, we 40 you know, Too Short, you know, the late, great Mac Dre, you know, and, of course, you got the, you know, of course, uh, up in Northern you got Filthy Rich, Mozzie, you know, Jay Stalin, Lil Blood, Stevie Joe, of course. You know, can't forget Young Lay and Mac Mall are going down, you know, to, you know, of course, AD, you know, um, Cam and China, G Perico, you know, uh, so many, you know, dope artists. You know, uh, how do you change over the years? Sorry, how do I what? How, how 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 do you uh, feel in terms of how you've seen the West Coast rap style change over the years with a lot of the new artists coming in? Yeah, man. I mean, it's exciting. It's a. Uh, I feel it's cool. You know, it's so many different sounds and styles. You know, it's a. Uh, it's cool. You know, like I like it. It's the variety now. You know, I mean, I'm I'm a hardcore gangster fan, gangster rap, and it's interesting mm-hmm. to see other other people's takes on this gangster style. You know, so it's it's cool. You know. A lot of different artists, you know, throughout the West Coast, and everybody has, you know, their own, their own type of style, and you know, or similar styles. But you know, I like, I like it. You know, I like the difference, the variety. Definitely. Um, now we would be. Well, I think you bring it up a little bit, T Max. Can you hear me? Yeah, you. Yeah, you were breaking up some when you was talking. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, we would be remiss, Sergey, if we didn't if we didn't mention, you know, Nipsey Hustle too, you know, the late great legend. Oh, yeah. Um, in terms of Nipsey's business model, in terms of how he developed his rapping as well as his business enterprise, how did that inspire the new the new West generation in terms of, you know, following what he did that would pretty much impact you know, the next generation of MCs coming through the West Coast. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, rest in, yeah, definitely rest in peace, Nipsey. I mean, uh, yeah, he was doing he was doing a lot. You know, he was doing a lot for 
his community, and I think that's that's cool. That's important, and you know, I think hopefully that inspired others to make sure you know to give back to their own communities and to you know, and to you know the culture, you know, to the West Coast, even even worldwide musically, you know. Um, I think uh, you know he inspired a lot of people and probably influenced a lot of people to do their thing, and you know. You know how he had his store, his store, and all that stuff in his community. So that's something cool that you know I think you know a lot of people hopefully get inspired by, and you know make sure they do similar things, make smart moves once they get get money. You know, so that's pretty pretty cool. You know about Nipsey and stuff that he was doing. Definitely. Yeah, you've been um, following the ruthless yeah. movement. Probably from the beginning when you started picking up a set of headphones and got into rap music. Now, what do you think of uh, Straight Outta Compton and how that movie was portrayed? Oh yeah, man, uh, Straight Outta Compton was cool. You know, I it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. Um, but you know, like everybody says, uh, there was some parts that were not accurate, and you know that's understandable. I mean, they had to make a movie for Hollywood, so. You know, most of it was cool. I enjoyed it. I liked it. It was very nice to see Easy portrayed and everybody else. You know, the beginning. It, it was pretty cool. I mean, entertaining. But uh, you know, those parts that were not accurate as far as how Easy, you know, towards the end of Easy's life. You know, you know, he was. It was a lot of people that know him know that's not how he was living. You know, so but other than that, it was a pretty cool movie. I just wish Easy would have, you know. They would have made him look better towards the end. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Now, in terms of the business level, in terms of what you've done in the industry, in terms of being an executive producer, what have you learned on the business side in terms of how you know the game goes from a business angle, in terms of making sure everything's taken care of, in terms of you know um, just all of the business aspects of it. Uh, yeah, man, it's. Uh... You know, just learning a lot, you know, just making sure I have, uh, you know, lawyers advising me, letting me, you know, making sure everything's everything's tight as far as the business and uh, finances and everything, you know, just make sure everything's on point. Don't want no issues later down the line, you know, so, you know, that's one of the main things um, that, you know, you have to work, you know, that comes along with the, being the, putting the album out. If you want to do it right, um, and then you know, just learning as I go. You know, doing a lot of research myself, and uh, just putting it. You know, making sure that everything's on point. You know, as far as this project, you know, it's like a lot of work behind the scenes. You know, <laughs> definitely. But you know what's yeah, crazy man. about NWA was how <clears throat> with Easy, he he was such a visionary that, for my knowledge, I could be wrong. He was probably one of the first to in- incorporate, like, skits and, like, horror, like, effects in it, like, special effects in there. Because you know how he used to do his <laughs> intros to his albums with the with yeah. the demonic voices? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah, and you had was... the court scene on F the Police. Like, they brought, like, yeah. a cinema-type atmosphere to the album. Yeah, yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's like, you know, they were ahead of their time, Easy and all the guys back then, you know? That's, you know, probably part of the formula that made everything work out the way it did. So that's pretty cool. Now, the best skit they did to me out of all of them was, the, I don't know if anybody had of the Niggas for Life out, but the protest skit when the guy was doing the news coverage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was <laughs> sick genius right there. Yeah, yeah, like the whole Rodney King thing. I think it's something about the. No, no, that was the other album. Never mind. But yeah, the protesters. Yeah, that's just crazy. The guy <laughs> was doing the news. The, the, the dude was. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. He was, he was at a protest, <laughs> and shots started firing out. He said, "I've been hit. I've been hit. Turn yeah, the yeah, camera yeah, off, yeah. motherfuckers." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. This is cool. That's. Yeah, take me back. <laughs> now, yeah, cool. you know, in terms of now, in terms of you know, of course, there are two groups 
you know, that stand out in the hip hop pantheon of freedom of speech, you know, who really went on the front lines. Of course, you know, NWA was one and Two Live Crew was the other in terms of them challenging the conventional norms of what America deemed appropriate for society because they gave a voice to an audience that may have otherwise not had any, especially, you know, while the music wasn't explicit, yes it did say something in terms of how, you know, we understood it in the hood. Um, how did you feel growing up around that time about seeing how a lot of people were trying to shut gangster rap down, trying to say it was this bane on society that should be, you know, uh, that should be rid of, you know, in terms of how people really at times misunderstood the messages that were being said in it? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, it was a, uh, you know, it was some crazy times, you know, when all that anti-rap and uh, profanity stuff was going on. Um, you know, it was just like you said, misunderstanding as far as people in charge, you know, like the president, the gov, you know, whatever, the governor, senators, misunderstanding the music, you know, different music, you know, they probably felt threatened, and you know, it was pretty explicit and hardcore, but. You know, it was different, and luckily it was all taken to court. And you know, I think Two Light Crew was able to win the win some judgment and make sure that you know there was censorship, but it wasn't as bad as, or it was just probably putting the little labels on the CDs and stuff like that. So you know, it was always a big misunderstanding. But you know, props to them for you know paving the way for everybody else. You know, to just have the freedom to say whatever they want to say. You know, and express themselves creatively. So, yeah, man, those were some interesting times back then, you know. It, it really impacted the way, time, you know, music and art is today. So, you know, props to them. And I miss those Definitely. days where, I miss those days where rap was scary to the masses. That yeah, one was that's the best what it was, time yeah. To be. When, <laughs> yeah, when it was real scary, when you had people so mad, they wanted to run over CDs with a steamroller. Yeah. Yeah, Calvin <laughs> Bucks and all them back in the day. Yeah, yeah, those people. Yeah, of course. Be the Lord Sucker, Calvin Butts, all of them. You yeah. know, uh, you know that was that, definitely that was a weird time. Yeah, shit in the hood, you know, <laughs> with all the drugs and everything. So you know, it's just crazy times. Definitely. Now, do you see uh, today's hip hop, Sergio? Do you believe it's pretty much got the political edge that it once did in the '90s in terms of? You know, how, you know, artists like, you know, of course, Public Enemy, Ice-T, Ice Cube, you know, how they were not afraid to, you know, to lock crew, of course, they were not afraid to speak their mind about what was going on in the political arena. Of course, KRS-One as well, um, Paris the Black Panther, uh, shout out to Oakland, you know, um, yeah, yeah. you know, do you think, uh, um, how do you feel today about the climate in terms of how artists uh, pretty much have, you know, um, how today the the paradigm has come in terms of artists really being politically conscious, or do you think a lot of them really are not trying to attack certain social issues as much as, you know, years have gone by? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not, yeah, I follow a few artists, uh, but I'm not too, I haven't heard that much as far as how it was back then with, like, Public Enemy and you know, even KRS One, you know, they're pretty out there, you know, politically and just, you know, being trying to keep, you know, get people, get people awareness of stuff that's happening. Um, I haven't, I know there is artists out there, but I haven't really followed too many of them. Um, but you know, I'm, you know, so I can't, I don't really know what to say about that. But um, you know, I know there's for sure there's artists out there doing their thing, you know, and it it is a different you know different era and they probably have different issues like a lot of these police killings you know different it, different issues even though they were happening back then you know there's mm-hmm. new things that are happening now as far as you know these you know it's similar but different and it's, i do know a lot of rappers and artists are addressing that and you know that's good that's a good thing you know that people are still using their voice to uh you know what i mean to put put people you know on the spot if they're messing up you know whether it's police or right. government, government, you know. Definitely. 
And also, too, uh, how do you feel like in terms of, you know, um, you know, social media like Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, you know, Facebook, how do you feel that's influenced, you know, the culture today as well in terms of how artists are marketing themselves? Do you think a lot of times they, some artists try to use that as a artificial platform in terms of antics to uh, get an audience? Or do you see a lot of artists, more artists actually using real talent in order to show the masses, you know, what they have to offer the culture, you know, that they may have not had years ago in terms of an outlet? Yeah, that's true, you know. Yeah, I mean, they have, yeah, like, uh, I haven't really seen that much out there, though, as far as people using it for, uh, you know, it's mostly just for everybody's p- own publicity, you know, like, you're trying to promote your album, you're trying to promote, you know, get likes, get views and everything. But, you know, I'm sure there's people out there I haven't seen it that much. I mean, I go on it, you know, to promote whatever I need to promote and support artists and, you know, sh- you know people that I that I like. Um, but uh, you know, I, I'm trying to. I haven't really seen that much. You know, people raising issues. I know that there is. I probably just haven't seen them. You know, like addressing issues. And I know they have, but I just off the top of my head, I can't. You know, think of specific artists. But I know we all have the power to do that. You know, something's happening. I do see people posting these. You know, police videos, and you know, it's a faster way to sh- share information and organize you know so as long as it's you know being done in a positive way as far as to get people attention on issues that are you know affecting us and you know social media is i like that you know like like that about social media instagram i really don't like seeing you know stuff you know negative stuff (laughs) you know people post the videos of someone getting beat up shit like that i'm not into that but i know they're raising awareness and you know everybody does does stuff like that once in a while so you know as long as for a good reason you know um you know but social media is cool you know everybody could just create your own you know create your own world and put it out there and people might great buy for it. network too yeah great for networking definitely yeah and then you see some random weird shit pop up on instagram but you know <laughs> <laughs> Now, in terms of random weird shit to be going on, of course, you know, uh, Takashi got out a couple of weeks ago and has gone on <laughs> his little marketing campaign trying to become relevant again and engaging in a lot of the foolishness that at one point he said he was going to abstain from, you know, when this whole trial saga kicked off for him. What do you yeah. think is the most... What do you think is the most dangerous element of where some artists do try to use an exaggerated uh, act uh, to really push themselves, you know, especially when we know the situation now about how he folded like an envelope, you know, and before yeah. they mailed them all, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what are your feelings about situations like that, about where it becomes, let's just keep it real here on Off the Cuff, a mockery of the culture and an antithesis of everything that it stands for. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's yeah, that's what it is, a mockery. And uh, that's the thing about, you know, part of social media, you know, some people take it that far where they make the whole music, you know, mockery of, you know, the culture and everything that a lot of people worked hard to, to, to lay out, you know, uh, and establish. But that's why you know just gotta f- follow who you who you like and you know me personally like to be honest I just mostly listen to old school like I really don't listen to that many artists uh, I just listen mm-hmm. to like old school shit like from the nineties and uh, every so often I'll hear something catchy or I'll see something catchy and you know okay cool but you know as far as me my pers- personal taste I just like ruthless old school shit and you know I support everything ruthless. All the ruthless artists putting out music, cocaine, BG Knockout, everybody. I support all them, and you know that's my that's my type of style. I see all these some you know not all young or new artists having crazy styles, but you know sometimes they take it too far. Like uh, how you saying like Takashi? I mean, he got a second chance, and if I was him, I would just lay low and 
make the millions and that's it or whatever, you know, whatever he's making, I don't know. But yeah, right. you know, some people right. just don't, I don't know, maybe it's because we're older, we get it, but some, maybe because he's young, but I know all, not all young people think that way, but, you know, I don't know what Takashi's up to, though, that's, that's, uh, I would lay, I would be laying low and still putting stuff out, just, you know, he's acting crazy. Definitely. So, Seeing that you are seeing in terms of ruthless, uh, and obviously you're such a uh, supporter and aficionado of them, I wanted to give you some of the names of the people there. And the first thing that comes to your mind, go ahead and say it. You know, all the people affiliated. Um, right. You know, and just the first word or words, you know, that come to your mind. Uh, BG Knockout and Dress. BG Knockout and Dress. You know, real gangsters. MC Ren. Strand uh, of legend, you know, cocaine, cocaine, G funk originator. <laughs> word, word, <laughs> word. Yeah, man. I mean, um, a brown side, brown side. Oh man, you know, wow. Just wow. Just rest in peace, you know, Toker. You know, Chicano rap legend. You know. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I think one thing about it, uh, you know, that is so beautiful about L.A., man, you know, uh, you know, a shout out to, you know, everybody from North, you know, Northern Cal to Southern Cal, man. You know, of course, Orange County, you know, Compton, you know, East L.A., you know, Sacramento, Oakland, you know, uh, just all over, man, Vallejo. Um, what is it about California that you all just create magic in terms of, of what you all put out in terms of not only creating music, but creating music that becomes a staple and the standard by which future products are judged by reference of the pedigree and the tradition of which it is created. Um, I mean, what is it like to know that you all have such a high uh, respect, such an esteem, such reverence in hip hop culture for what you all have produced, you know, not only just in, you know, hip hop, but of course, you know, in R and B, you know, of course, like Tony, 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 you know, coming out of Oakland, mm. you know, and of course, you know, uh, my girl crush every day, her coming out of Alejo yeah. with what she's doing. I mean, how does it yeah. feel? Yeah, man. I, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's the weather. I don't know. You know, nice, California weather, but uh, yeah, it feels good, you know, to know that, you know, the West Coast sound has a, you know, has its 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 own little feel to it, uh, you know, Southern Cali, you know, that a lot of people could vibe to throughout the world, you know, it's a certain uh, certain feel, you know, to it that it's hard to explain, you know, blame it on the weather, the palm trees, you know, maybe the, you know, shootings, I don't know, but mixture of everything out here that you know that just comes to my mind you know mm-hmm. definitely if you could name three west coast albums that really define it from all sides uh what would your three west coast albums be that really define uh la oh damn <laughs> That's kind of difficult right there. Let me think. Just give me a minute. Um, for sure, uh, it would have to be a straight out of Compton. For sure, you know. NWA straight out of Compton. All right. Um, just because, you know, per- I personally feel laid out the foundation for what was to come. Uh, NWA straight out of Compton. Uh, you know, Above the Law, Uncle Sam's Curse. So actually, yeah, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll give that one. Uncle Yo. Sam's Curse. I'll, Yo, and above yeah. the Law, Uncle Sam's Curse. And then, um, yeah, I'm just gonna take it to the ground side. You know, the first ground side album. That's the perfect, perfect time. You know, perfect time balance and time period and just sound for that. That represents it for me. You know, personally. Yeah, man. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, dude, when you said Uncle Sam's curse, man, that <laughs> is like, you know, I think out of all the Above the Law albums, 
that is one of the albums that really, 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 I think, resonates with those in the know of gangster rap. And not only gangster rap, but just hip-hop in general. Um, yeah. Of course, we know what Brownside, you know, means for the, you know, for the, you know, Chicano culture. You know, shout out to 18th yeah. Street, La M.A., you know, all the real crews, you know, um, yeah. Logan Heights. You know, we got to shout out all the G's, you know, everywhere, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we know what brown side means, you know, to our brown brothers. What did Uncle Sam's Curse by Above the Law, what did that, how, why does that album resonate so much across the board with so many people? Because so many people I talked to uh, about Above the Law's Uncle Sam's Curse, that is like an album that is like just, it just has that uh, ethereal vibe. Like it's just one of those albums that really just, just captures so many emotions. Yeah, exactly, man. That's what it is. You know, it touches on a lot of themes that were, you know, happening back then. And, uh, you know, the sound was different, you know, you know, classic, you know, G, you know, you know, big co 187 G funk, you know, we have cocaine on there. It's just the whole package, you know, and even like back then for me, it felt like it was kind of like stuff that, people shouldn't be talking about, like, talking shit about Uncle Sam and stuff. You know, like, Uncle Sam's <laughs> first kind of, like, exposing the shit, and I thought, like, damn, I didn't think people could do this. So, above the law, you know, they you know, they did it, and you know, it was, a good, you know, the whole theme of the album was different, you know, different little subjects throughout it that just really made an impact, and make an impact, even so today, you know, and stick out in my mind a lot, you know. So I just thought mm-hmm. an overall really good album, and you know, rest in peace, KMG. You know, it's just one of my yeah, favorites, man. and you know, it it was uh, you know, I, I never get tired. I could listen to that whole album from start to finish and enjoy it. You know, like enjoy it even now, even after all these years. It's it's a good yeah, album, but man. Respect on Cole One Eight Seven's name because he was part of the pioneers of G Funk. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Big Hutch. Shout out to. Shout out to Big Hutch, you know, he he had a lot to do with this album, really helped me out as far as, you know, on some tracks and stuff. So, you know, shout out to Big Hutch, Cole 27. Definitely. Definitely, now. Definitely, man. We um, about to... It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, go yeah. ahead, King. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, we got a minute and ticking. And um, before we wrap this thing up, can you go ahead and tell the people where you can find the project? And where your social media yeah. handles and all that jazz. All right, cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, you could get the project. Uh, go to ruthlessfamily.com. Right there, you'll see the album cover. Click on the album cover, and it'll take you straight to the store. You could get a CD. Uh, shit, I was going to say DVD. It's not DVD. Uh, CD, <laughs> t- uh, records, two, two record set, um, and cassette format, you know, for all the old school. It's definitely a collector collector album for all of you and you know who 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 big fans and even those new new fans you know and you could get every purchase you get a digital automatic digital download so you don't have to wait for it to arrive you just get the digital on the spot and it should you know just go to ruthlessfamily.com pick that up um it should be on iTunes Spotify and all those places hopefully soon i mean it was supposed to be up a couple of weeks ago but they told me because of this COVID-19, it got delayed a little, so I'm just waiting on them. But, you know, I'll definitely update it on the website and social media. Um, you know, Instagram is uh, Ruthless Propaganda. And, yeah, definitely just go to ruthlessfamily.com and you could get everything from there. But, yeah, man, thank you guys so much. Anytime, brother. Man, thank you. And thank you, man. I also man. want to say, too, I also want to say, too, that the music that you heard courtesy of the background was from Able Beast. These guys oh, here, nice. or this man guy, whoever it is, he got some of the flyest production, man. So if you type in YouTube, oh, yeah. type sure. in Able Beast, at A-B-E-L-B-E-A-T-S, that man got some crazy flavor. He like like Battle Cap type beats, DJ Quick type beats. That's cool. Nice. That That's cool, man. So crazy. Check I'm like, it out. Perfect background music. So check him out. Yeah. I thought I put yeah, them right sure. quick. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, man. Yeah, on that note, guys, yeah. I'm about to sign up out of here. I also want to say a big shout to 
today. We had a great first first hour. It was a great episode. We're gonna have that lined up for for uh, Monday, and I'm gonna have this episode up as Monday as well. So join us Sunday. We're gonna have crazy from the No Limit Forever 504 boys in the building for a special Sunday night episode. So stay tuned. Yep. All right. Cool. All right.